Hey guys, my name is Austin, and in this course, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a level select system for your Unity games. It's going to be akin to the mobile menu selects that you see a lot for uh, games. You have to progress through levels and you earn a star rating, and uh, levels are locked until you do something to unlock them, whatever that may be for your game. It's going to be a very universal system that can be plugged into any game, really. It's going to just have a nice little API that you can hook into and lock levels, unlock levels, give star ratings, all that cool stuff. It'll be very simple. We're going to be using these assets you see here. They're, they are free to use Kenny assets. We have a lock, a star, and then just some, some actual uh, backgrounds that we can use, some panel images. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go and create a new project. I'm in Unity 2017, the latest version. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to call it level select Zenva. And I'm going to select 2D for mine. If your game is 3D, obviously you'll have a 3D uh, project. And I'm going to click create project. So my default layout is probably different than your default layout. To get us on the same page, I'm going to go up here to the right and go to layout and go to default. And that's what you get when you first install Unity. And in this episode, uh, the first episode of the course, we're going to go over creating what a level is, uh, creating the level object so that we can describe the level name, the ID for the level, how many stars a level has, and if it is locked or unlocked, or completed or not completed. That is the basis for the whole system, is to know the information about individual levels. So to get started doing this, I'm going to create an asset folder. It's going to go create folder and I want to call it scripts I'm going to open that up and inside of scripts I want to create a C sharp script called level and let's go ahead and double click on this and open it up in Visual Studio once it loads you'll have this template I'm going to get rid of the start and update as we won't be using those for this and we're just going to define some properties that will make up a level and to do this in Visual Studio, I'm going to type PROP, prop, and hit tab twice. And it's going to auto create my property for me. It's an auto uh, getter and setter as well. So we can uh, just define what kind of property it is and also the name of the property. So the type of property is going to be the ID for the level. So it's going to be an integer. That's correct. I'm going to call it ID, capital I, capital D. And if you're not familiar with properties, it's a pretty basic C sharp concept, but. Uh, this is just allowing us to define, maybe you would define a variable like public int ID, but this will allow us control over the getter and the setter, the value you get when you call it and the value you set when you set it as something. But we don't have to control that at the moment. I just like to apply a property just in case in the future I want to go in and then do something with a getter or the setter. But in this case, it's acting very similarly to just a variable or a field that you would typically use. Another property here. It's going to be a string because this is going to be called the level name. So whatever the name of the level is. Another property. It's going to be a bool, so true or false. And it's going to be completed, whether or not the level has been completed. Another property. It's going to be an integer for the amount of stars that we have. So if we have one star, two star, three star, it's going to be based on a three star system, like most of these mobile games are. Uh, and you're going to be able to grant stars based on how well the player did. It's up to your game, obviously. It's just going to be a universal system that you can then grant however many stars you deem suitable for the player's success. Another property here is going to be another bool. And this one's going to be whether or not the level is locked. So you may decide to lock or unlock levels based on different criteria. So maybe in this case, you have to complete level three before you can complete level four and level four before you can complete level five and so on. Or maybe you require they get three stars and level two before they can move on to level three, whatever it may be. I want to make sure it's easy to lock and unlock levels. And if they are locked, you cannot go to them. If they are unlocked, you can go to them. And that should be all of the information that we need per level. So now let's set this up in a constructor so that we can actually create these levels very simply. It's going to be a public, it's going to be called level, as our class name is level. So we create just a level constructor just like this. 
and this needs an int for an ID. We're just going to follow down the list here. A string for the level name a bool for completed. And notice these are just your regular old variables. So we're having the uh, the camel case. Notice how these are camel cased, starting with an uppercase though. And these are starting with a lowercase. It's There's a different name for each type, but uh, not that important. And then we have the int for stars and the bool for locked. Just following down the list there. And we'll do the same thing here, just follow down the list by doing this dot ID is equal to ID. This dot ID is redundant. It's telling me that that I don't need the this, but I like to have that so I know exactly what I'm referring to. I'm referring to this object's ID as opposed to this ID. Now they are different, so it would be wouldn't sound that necessary, but I like to do it this way anyway. You can get rid of the this, and it will be just the same. I like to be very explicit though. And this is saying that this ID of this instance of level that we're going to be creating using this constructor is going to be assigned the value whatever, that we pass the constructor whenever we construct it. So this dot level name is equal to level name and so on. And just like that. So whenever we create a level, we can decide what the starting values are now probably will have no stars and it will probably be locked and it won't be completed right but if we have a save file maybe we'll from that save file create the levels and then we can decide then if they were completed in the save file and how many stars the save file shows and how many are locked or unlocked and so on we just want to make sure the system is there for when we want to use that now what we need is a way to interact with these levels sure I could come in here and say I could uh, directly say stars are three or completed is false, but I want a more um, an easier to use interface. So I'm going to create a public void that returns nothing, no return value. It's going to be called complete, and this is just going to complete a level. So all this will do is take this dot completed. Sorry, this dot completed is equal to true. But what if we want to assign some stars to this whenever we complete it? To do that, I'll create an overload method for this, public void complete, just like that. And you're thinking, well, that's the same thing. You can't do that. The signature matches exactly. Well, what I want to do is add in an argument here, a parameter that says I'm accepting an integer by the name of stars. So now they are different. Notice the compiler is like, oh, okay, I can do that. That's fine. They are different, but the same. So if I were to go ahead and from another class somewhere I call complete on this level, it would then say I have two available signatures. I can pass it one that has stars or one that doesn't. So to do this, I'll do this dot completed is equal to true. And this dot stars is equal to stars. Or I could even just call complete from this one and you'd get the same effect. Pretty cool. Now what I want to do is I have a way to lock and unlock the levels. So I have another public void. I'll call it lock. This dot locked is equal to true. Pretty simple. I'm sure you're catching on by now. Public void unlock. This dot locked is equal to false. And the reason this is going to work pretty good for us is because the only place this really matters is whenever we're trying to select a level. So I load the UI that lets me click on a level or tap a level. And all it has to know is if something was completed, the amount of stars it has, and then if it is locked or unlocked. Because if it is unlocked, which means this.locked is false, we can go to it. If it is locked, we'll tap it and it'll say, hey, you can't go there. Please do this or something. And then if it's completed, we'll have a star count there pretty cool and that is all that our level class will need very simple very clean should allow us to interface with this very very efficiently so that is it for this episode in the next episode we will start setting up the level controller it's going to be a class that will allow us to interact with our levels allow us to complete levels and we'll be able to assign these values from there and also create our levels 
So we'll be able to create levels that have IDs, level names, and these values, and then have a list of all these levels that we can then eventually render out onto the screen in a grid with all that fancy stuff with the paging and all that. It's been pretty cool. So please stick around. Hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.